Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to call to order the Thursday, October 4th, 2018 Watertown Board of Adjustment meeting. Can I get a roll call? Dargis Johnson? Here. Ford? Here. Dolly? Here. Oletsky? Here. Culhane? Here. Olson, Hansen, Stein, and Kays are absent. We have a quorum. Thank you, Joe. First item on the agenda is the approval of the September 20th, 2018 minutes. Can I get a motion? I'll make that motion. Motion by Second. Mr. Colhane. Second by Dargitz Johnson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item two on the agenda is the applicant for an appeal to the terms of the zoning ordinance. Joe? Owner applicant is Marvin and Kathy Stavig. Address of the uh, parcel we're talking about is 160 Fifth Street Northeast. And this is a conditional use request and appeal. The applicants seek approval for the construction of a compliant 1,120 square foot addition onto an existing non-conforming 3,000 square foot non-residential building pursuant to 21-1004-2AB contingent upon compliance with 210202 2B7A through H, which is specific rules governing individual conditional uses, and concurrently appeal the terms of 210302 regarding the alteration or enlargement of non-conforming non structures. The board will also review the application for ongoing conditional use approval apartments located in the C3 Highway Commercial District pursu pursuant to 2128039 and contingent upon compliance with 210202 2B7A through H again specific rules governing individual conditional uses. The staff findings um, currently there exists a non-compliant circa 1952 3,000 square foot non-residential block building on a substandard 13,635 square foot C3 zone parcel and a non-compliant circa 1954 3,900 square foot four unit apartment building on a sub substandard 10,302 square foot C3 zone parcel. Owner applicants seek to enlarge the non-residential building first binding the buildings and parcels together with a devel development lot agreement, thereby creating a compliant C3 zone parcel with an accessory storage building to apartments. Both conditional uses allowed in the C3 zone if approved by the Board of Adjustment. Apartments is a listed conditional use for the C3 Highway Commercial District per 21-28039, and per 21-10042, all conditional uses if a permit to construct an accessory structure is requested and such structure will be accessory to a primary structure or use previously granted a conditional use, the permit may only be issued as a conditional use by the Board of Adjustment. Only specifically authorized accessory uses are allowed. No accessory use shall be permitted in any district unless such use is specifically authorized by the ordinance. No accessory use shall be deemed to be authorized by the ordinance unless such use is in fact subordinate to and on the same zoning lot with the principal use in conjunction with which it is maintained. The applicant submitted the attached partial site plan, which reflects or does not reflect the following requirements of the ordinance. Section 210202, 2B7A through H. Before any conditional use shall be issued, um, the board shall make written findings certifying compliance with the specific rules governing individual condition, conditional uses and the satisfactory provision and arrangement has been made uh, according and concerning the following where applicable. Uh, we talk about ingress and egress to the property and proposed structures. Um, thereon, with particular reference to the automotive and pedestrian safety and convenience traffic flow and control and access in case of fire or cat catastrophe. Uh, we talk about off-street parking and loading areas where required with particular attention to the economic noise, glare, or odor, odor effects of the conditional uh, uses on joining, adjoining properties, generally in the district. Um, so in accordance with 2163 off-street parking and loading requirements, uh, the submitted site plan does not show the apartment house or, or its associated parking area, uh, but there appears to be six possibly legal off-street parking spaces. To be counted, a legal off-street parking space must meet minimum size and location standards and allow the exit of a vehicle without moving another vehicle. Uh, just let me 
come in a little bit closer here to this area. And you can see the parking for the apartment building here. And then we have refuse and service areas. Uh, there is one commercial dumpster that sits in front of this building here. And utilities uh, should be looked at with reference to locations, availability and compatibility, screening and buffering with reference to type, dimension and character, signage, if any, proposed, and exterior lighting with reference to glare, traffic, safety, economic effect, and compatibility and harmony with, harmony with properties in the district. And then we have required yards and open space. And this is where we say this is a conforming structure uh, being uh, connected to a, a non-conforming building because the conforming, the addition will be conforming with setbacks. It will comply with the setbacks in the C3 zone, but obviously this building does not. Um, then basically we've got general compatibility with adjacent properties and other properties in the district. The, um, the storage was not addressed in the letter or any storage that, that may happen, but it will have to comply with chapter 2165. And basically we have um, the west side of the property uh, does not comply with boulevard and infrastructure requirements. It's almost all used as driveway. Uh, it doesn't have curb gutter grass, uh, it's just rollover driveway. So that said, if application is endorsed, this board may consider requiring fulfillment of any and all lacking boulevard infrastructure requirements in conjunction with any structural improvements authorized by building permit. Thank you, Joe. I'd like to open the public uh, hearing if anybody's here to speak on behalf or against. Are the applicants here? Go ahead and come forward if you could. Jill, as far as I, I, one of my questions, I guess, was on the development lot agreement, and I see that there is intention to, to form a development lot agreement between the two. Is, is that from a square footage standpoint or setbacks or both? Setbacks. I'm sorry. I'm jumping in. I... And area and width requirements. It makes this parcel now joined um, a, a compatible or a, a compliant C3 zone parcel over 20,000 square feet and over 100 feet in width. Perfect. So the, the structure that exists there from a setback standpoint, of course, doesn't meet the current, but the, uh, the planned uh, addition that they're adding on would meet all the required setbacks? Correct. <clears throat> is the apartment building addressed from the street to the south, or is it from the street, from Fifth Avenue or the cross, what's that, B Avenue or C? Or? Yes, this is B Avenue, and that's what this um, apartment house was addressed off of. So then the, it meets the setbacks from B Avenue, right? Actually, this has two front setbacks, both, yeah, because it's the front is always determined by street adjacent. <clears throat> yeah. But that was set by permit, so it's a legally conforming structure as it was set there. So, Procedurally, why is this a conditional use as opposed to a variance? I'm going to jump in. <clears throat> it's basically that used to be his business or any longer does the business, and it's just to tie that all together and make it all one parcel. The conditional use is just saying this is now going to become an accessory structure to the apartments because that's where he stores his equipment and his plows and his snowblowers and stuff like that, plus his personal stuff. So th it, now that it would be all one parcel, if you have to sell it as one parcel. Correct. So the storage and the apartment building would be all one parcel. Correct. Jill had mentioned in the staff report about that uh, dumpster in the front of the building. As far as screening goes, do you have any attention to, to do screening? That's one of the conditions that we, we typically look at in situations like this in a buffer area. That dumpster has not been used it's from SNL Palace to Stone when I took it across the street. So. It, I just said it there. <laughs> okay. It hasn't been dumped for two years. So it's, it's not being used. So are you planning to move it? I can. Or leave it there? <laughs> I can move it to the back of the building. Either or move it or screen it? Well, I wouldn't screen it, no. I'd just right. move it to the back of the building. Uh, I've offered it to Joyce Ranch and... And, and I don't know if she still wants it or what. I, 
but it's, I have no use for it. So. How many apartments are in the apartment building? There's four. Four, and we have spaces for six? Yeah, they're big. It's four one bedroom apartments, so, it's, so we have two more parking spaces than we need. Okay. Are you planning on reciting the whole building when, if you do the addition? The apartment building? No, no I'm sorry, the storage building. building. No, we'll just match the, it's just the south side and the building between the, the Moggs construction and the one we got is block and the rest of it. The front and back are, are metal. So the I side. It just looks like that plan there, like new siding is gonna be added to the whole thing. That's just the, the thing from, they don't know how to show used siding. <laughs> And I think Ken answered this earlier, but just to clarify, the, the new proposal would sit completely on that existing concrete pad that you have there adjacent to the building currently. Actually, it's, it, the driveway is all concrete, but the area where you're talking about the sitting there is gravel right now. Oh, it's gravel. Yeah, okay. but the driveway is not going to be any wider than the existing driveway is right now. Footprint he'll, won't. He'll just put a probably more pavement or concrete for the thing to sit on, but okay. yep. Any other questions from the board? I just want to compliment you on the fact that here you've had several building permits to for um, that you use them properly when you were um, making your additions and your changes. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. I appreciate you. that. Does, Thank you. does hard surface, in, is that hard surface parking for the apartments also? Yes. Yes, it is. It's okay. So we don't necessarily have an issue with curb and gutter then? There is not. No, and that's all pre-existing besides, so. Seeing no additional questions, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Thank you. Ask for a motion from the board. I'll move that we approve this conditional use application and ask that that dumpster be relocated. I have a motion by Ford. Do I have a second? I'll, I'll second that, but I would like to, that if everybody else starts doing curb and gutter, that, that, that he can't have the, what's that word? Waiver of right to protest. Thank you. Waiver of right to protest. Do you accept a friendly amendment to your? I surely do. Can, can I speak into that, though? Yes. I mean, typically if it's a driveway, though, you wouldn't tell somebody to take out their driveway and add curb and gutter. And that currently is driveway full with the cross there, except for maybe five feet. You're right. Um, so I'd be happy to add it in there, but you're only talking like a five-foot section that might require it. Is there curb and cutter on the B Avenue part? Yes, there is. Okay. So did you want to amend your motion or leave the waiver of right to protest out? I would propose that we leave the waiver of right to protest out, given that updated information from Ken. Do I have a second? From Ken. And the second. Agrees. Second by Bonnie? <laughs> Any additional discussion? The, the only thing that's nice about if there is a street project that would come through there that would be adding curb and gutter is then to control access. So if there was a waiver of right to protest, then um, wherever the access points would be and how wide it would be, I don't know what it, is, what it is existing, but that would be why that would be beneficial from an engineering standpoint. It could be re-examined at the time of that happening. It could be written into the waiver of right to protest that the engineering department would re-examine necessary access. With this all being one parcel, are we at all concerned about screening from the apartment building aspect to the, to the garage? Um, again, this... Not when it's the same property. You're screening from the neighbors, not from yourself. From yourself, okay. 
We have a motion on the table without the waiver of right to protest. Should we put it back in the way that they said it? Do the waiver of rights for the engineering department to review at that time? I have a proposal to amend. I have a second on the amendment. <laughs> I think seconds? it should be however is least cumbersome for the staff. And I really don't know what would be least cumbersome for the staff. Without? Okay. That's true. So do we have a second on the amendment? Seeing no second, we'll move on to vote on the original uh, motion. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Oletsky? Yes. Colhane? Yes. Dargis Johnson? Yes. Ford? Yes. And Dolly? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you, Jill. Item three on the agenda is open public comment submittal. If anybody's here to speak uh, to the board on a matter that was not talked about here today, and it doesn't look like we have anybody else in the audience, so we'll move on to old business. I have um, some old business. I wonder if I've had a couple of people ask me about some uh, motions that the board took in the minutes aren't on the website yet and it was actually from August 9th but I, I looked and I didn't see the minutes for April 5th June 7th August 9th or September 6th correct so if the, if if those could get on that would be great yeah because I can't answer those questions and I can't suggest to them that they go look thank you did you get all those dates, Jill? I will review and get them. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I think we did have a question, too, from a procedural standpoint, I guess, on the, the last topic from two weeks ago. We set a time limit of 15 days, which I believe is tomorrow. Have we heard any additional feedback? Um, possibly. <laughs> it's it's going to be under review. Um, I'm not looking for a positive result on that. Okay. We're just curious. Yep. Yep. I had a conversation with him, but I want to take it through further channels before I go any further publicly. Okay. And I'm sure you'll keep us informed. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. You'll be the second to know. <laughs> any additional old business? Seeing none, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, everybody.